Okay, friends, I'm back. Part two of Kwanzaa. So in our last book, we went over um, some of the terminology that is used with Kwanzaa, the basics of what the celebration is about, um, and the fact that it's based on seven principles. Now we're gonna read the folk tale relating to Kwanzaa, and I think you'll be able to identify those principles as they're used in the story. So let me share my screen, and here we go. Seven Spools of Thread, a Kwanzaa story by Angela Shelf Medeiros. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Read with permission of Albert Whitman and company. This book starts with an African proverb. Sticks in a bundle are unbreakable. What do you think that's talking about? Well, if I have one stick, let's pretend that my pen here is a stick. How hard would it be to break a stick that size? Not too hard, right? But what if I had 10 pens together or 10 sticks? Sticks, we're pretending they're sticks. And it made a bundle and they were all together. Would that be stronger? I think that's what this proverb is telling us, that individually, we're not as strong as we are when we stand united as a group. Let's go to the story. Before we do, let's quickly walk back through the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity and faith. Unity means standing together, working together and as a family, community, nation and race. Self-determination means figuring out who we are, who we want to be and what we're gonna do for that instead of letting other people decide for us. Collective work and responsibility, building and maintaining our community together, making each other's problems our own problems and solving them together. Cooperative economics, building and maintaining our stores and shops and businesses and profiting from them together. Um, purpose, to have a collective purpose and direction in developing our community. Creativity, to do as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we got it. And that may mean thinking outside the box, doing things a different way, using our creativity to be able to do that. Faith, to believe with all our hearts and our people, our parents, our leaders, our righteousness and the victory of our struggle. Now, listen for these as we go through the story. You ready? In a small African village in the country of Ghana, there lived an old man and his seven sons. After the death of his wife, the man served as both father and mother to the boys. The seven brothers were handsome young men. Their skin was smooth and dark as the finest mahogany wood. Their limbs were straight and strong as warrior spears, but they were a disappointment to their father. From morning until night, the family small home was filled with the sounds of the brothers quarreling. As soon as the sun brought forth a new day, the brothers began to argue. They argued all morning about how to tend the crops. They argued all afternoon about the weather. It is hot, said the middle son. No, a cool breeze is blowing, said the second one. They argued all evening about when to return home. It'll be dark soon. Let's finish this row and begin anew tomorrow. No, it's too early to stop, called the third son. Can't you see that the sun is setting, shouted the sixth son. And so it would continue until the moon beamed down and the stars twinkled in the sky. At mealtime, the young men argued until the stew was cold and the fufu was hard. You gave him more than me, whined the third son. I divided the food equally, said their father. I'll starve with only this small portion on my plate, complained the youngest. If you don't want it, I'll eat it, 
said the oldest son, and he grabbed a handful of meat from his brother's plate. Stop being so greedy, said the youngest. And so it went on every night. It was often morning before the seven brothers finished dinner. One sad day, the old man died and was buried. At sunrise the next morning, the village chief called the brothers before him. Your father has left an inheritance, said the chief. The brothers whispered excitedly among themselves. My father left me everything because I'm the oldest, said the oldest. I know my father left me everything because I'm the youngest, said the youngest. He left everything to me, said the middle son. I know I was his favorite. Eh, said the second son, everything's mine. The brothers began shouting and shoving and soon all seven were rolling around on the ground, hitting and kicking each other. Stop that this instant, the chief shouted. The brothers stopped fighting. They shook the dust off their clothes and sat before the chief eyeing each other suspiciously. Your father has decreed that all of his property and possessions will be divided among you evenly, said the chief. But first, by the time the moon rises tonight, you must learn to make gold out of these spools of silk thread. If you do not, you will be turned out of your home as beggars. The oldest received blue thread, the next brother red, the next yellow, the middle son was given orange thread, the next green, the next black, and the youngest son received white thread. For once, the brothers were speechless. The chief spoke again. From this moment forward, you must not argue among yourselves or raise your hands in anger toward one another. If you do, your father's property and all of his possessions will be divided equally amongst the poorest of the villagers. Go quickly. You only have a little time. The brothers bowed to the chief and hurried away. When the seven Ashanti brothers arrived at their farm, something unusual happened. They sat side by side from oldest to the youngest without saying anything unkind to each other. My brothers, the oldest said after a while, let us shake hands and make peace among ourselves. Let us never fight or argue again, said the youngest brother. The brothers placed their hands together and held each other tightly. For the first time in years, peace rested within the walls of the home. My brothers, said the third son quietly, surely our father would not turn us into the world as beggars. I agree, said the middle son. I do not believe our father would have given us the task of turning the thread into gold if it were impossible. Could it be, said the oldest son, that there might be some small pieces of gold in this thread? The sun beamed hotly overhead. Yellow streams of light crept into the hut. Each brother held up his spool of thread. The colors sparkled in the sunlight, but there were no nuggets of gold in these spools. I'm afraid not, brother, said the sixth son, but that was a good idea. Thank you, brother, said the oldest. I wanna stop there for just a second. Think about how that sixth son reacted he didn't say, ah, that was a dumb idea. He didn't laugh at the oldest brother for the suggestion. He thought about it. They, all of the brothers thought about it together. They looked at it, they considered it. They decided it wasn't the right answer, but they appreciated that the oldest brother had tried. Sometimes when we're brainstorming, we come up with some crazy ideas. We'll get further if we're supportive and respectful of each other. Think about that while we keep going. Could it be, said the youngest, that by making something from this thread, we could earn a fortune in gold? Perhaps, said the oldest, we could make cloth out of this thread and sell it. I believe we can do it. See, there's the oldest brother. He wasn't beaten down because they were respectful of his thought before, and now he's got an even better idea. 
This is a good plan, said the middle son, but we do not have enough of any one color to make a full bolt of cloth. What if, said the third son, we weave together to make a cloth of many colors? But our people do not wear cloth like that, said the fifth son. We wear only one cloth of one color. Maybe, said the second, we could make a cloth that is so special that everyone will want to wear it. My brother, said the sixth son, we could finish faster if we all work together. I know we can succeed, said the middle son. The seven Ashanti brothers went to work. Together, they cut the wood to make a loom. The younger brothers held the pieces together while the older brothers assembled the loom. They took turns weaving cloth out of their spools of thread. They made a pattern of stripes and shapes that looked like wings of birds. They used all the colors, blue, red, yellow, orange, green, black, and white. Soon, the brothers had several pieces of beautiful multicolored cloth. When the cloth was finished, the seven brothers took turns neatly folding the brightly colored fabric. Then they placed it into seven baskets and put the baskets on their heads. The brothers formed a line from oldest to youngest and began the journey to the village. The sun slowly made a golden path across the sky. The brothers hurried down the long dusty road as quickly as they could. Remember, they're supposed to be getting gold before the moon sets. As soon as they entered the marketplace, the seven Ashanti brothers called out, come and buy the most wonderful cloth in the world. Come and buy the most wonderful cloth in the world. They unfolded a bolt and held it up for all to see. The multicolored fabric glistened like a rainbow. A crowd gathered around the seven Ashanti brothers. Ooh, said one of the villagers. I've never seen a cloth so beautiful. Look at the unusual pattern. Ah, said another, this is the finest fabric in all the land. Feel the texture. The brothers smiled proudly. Suddenly, a man dressed in magnificent robes pushed his way to the front of the crowd. Everyone stood back respectfully. It was the king's treasurer. He rubbed the cloth between the palms of his hand and then he held it up to the sunlight. What a thing of beauty, he said fingering the material. This cloth will make a wonderful gift for the king. I must have all of it. The seven brothers whispered together. Cloth fit for a king, said the oldest, should be purchased at a price only a king can pay. It is yours for one bag of gold. Sold, said the king's treasurer. He untied his bag of gold and spilled out many pieces for the brothers. The seven Ashanti brothers ran out of the marketplace and back down the road to their village. A shining silver moon began to creep up into the sky. Panting and dripping wet with sweat, the brothers threw themselves before the chief's hut. Oh, chief, said the oldest, we have turned the thread into gold. The chief came out of his hut and sat upon a stool. The oldest brother poured the gold out onto the ground. Have you argued or fought today? asked the chief. No, my chief, said the youngest. We've been too busy working together to argue or fight. Then you have learned the lesson your father sought to teach you, said the chief. All that he had is now yours. The older brother smiled happily, but the youngest son looked sad. What about the poor people in the village, he asked. We receive an inheritance, but what will they do? Perhaps, said the oldest, we can teach them how to turn their thread into gold. The chief smiled. You have learned your lesson very well. The seven Ashanti brothers taught their people carefully. The village became famous for its beautiful multicolored cloth and the villagers prospered. From that day until this, the seven Ashanti brothers have worked together, farming the land, and they have worked peacefully in honor of their father. 
at the end, it talks about the African weaving style and how to weave, uh, how to weave cloth to make a belt. If you want to pause on those instructions, you can do that on your own. But for just a second, I want you to think about those characteristics we talked about, the seven characteristics. Did you see and find some of those things in the story? I think we see one right here at the end where all of the brothers are so happy they've inherited, but the youngest brother also thinks of others, thinking of his brother and sister's problems, meaning the villagers' problems, and making them his own, saying, how do we help them? And then they work together to teach the villagers how to also weave the cloth so that everybody can be prosperous. That's just one example. I think if you go back and look at the other things, you'll be able to find all seven of those principles of Kwanzaa in this story. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, just a little bit about Kwanzaa. Again, we may not individually celebrate Kwanzaa, but it's nice to know what's being celebrated by people in our community around us. Take care. Bye, guys.